So my name is Piyush Devangan. So we had a very excellent presentation from the morning. So I'll be speaking for next uh, 10 to 15 minutes to explain the ARC's model of asset lifecycle management. So Ms. Whiteley has already explained the details of asset management. So I'll be focusing on the ARC's model for asset lifecycle management. For that, I'll just uh, give a brief explanation of why industry needs asset management, why it has become so important. And we already have a traditional model for asset management from a very long time. So why do we need a new model? Why do we have to relook re -look at the traditional model? And then, of course, the importance of information management for asset lifecycle management. If you see the need for asset management, the major challenges for the manufacturer is they have to continuous work on improving their operations to reduce the operational cost. The competitions are increasing with the emergence of the market. Global players are there. They have to reduce the pricing constantly. So they have to focus on improving the operations cost. And on the, on the other hand, they have to focus on the things which do not add any financial value. For example, they have to invest on regulatory compliance. They have to invest on securities, which are very important for the industries, but they don't directly add to the financial gains for the company. So today's business driver demand for better asset management. And it is very obvious for the industries today. So ARC has recently done the CAPEX capital expenditure survey for all industries in India. This is the few examples of electric power, oil and gas and refining, chemicals and petrochemicals, and uh, metals industries. If you look at the graph, you'll find that while the revenues are increasing, the companies are not adding new assets. So here the challenges are more in this difficult scenario where the new capex are not coming in that fashion. So we have to do more with less. So this is the major challenges with all the companies. So again, it's obvious the need for better asset, information, asset management, information management has become very important. Then why do we need a new asset management model? We already have an asset management model which is running for a very long time in the industries. We have a clear idea of designing, procurement, source, build, commissioning, operations, maintenance, and retire of assets. We have a clear idea of how we are doing capital, capex investment, operational in expenditures. So why do we need asset management? Better model for asset management. Basically because our traditional model focuses too much on physical assets. But in reality, like physical assets are more important, but we have virtual assets. We have human assets that are also become equally important now. This traditional mo model focuses too much on project, too much on EPCs, creating a new asset, then on plant issues, operational issues. And it also doesn't consider too much interdependencies among these operations. In fact, presently the and from the traditionally, all the organizations are structured like they have a separate functional group for design, for sourcing a building, commissioning, operations, maintenance, like the portfolio management. And all these have a lot of information that needs to be shared. All are linked. But the consideration for interdependencies is not done. So as I said, for the same process, we have physical Human and virtual, all three assets are equally important. We have a lot of stakeholders during the entire asset life cycle. And all these stakeholders has to share information throughout the life cycle of a plant, which, which is designed, operate, and maintain. So this is the traditional model for asset management, which is basically a linear in nature. There's a start, there's an end. But in reality, this, this process, once it starts, there's not an end. The project continues. The modification continues. The expansion continues. Again, there's a lot of information exchange, a lot of interactions has to be done between all these departments. So what ARC has built a new model for asset lifecycle management, we have categorized the three major 
stakeholder for asset life cycle management. Like we have a portfolio management, we have a project management, we have a asset performance management. So basically, when, the new when we create a new facility, it is the responsibility of a portfolio manager to assess through different applications, through different metrics, the return of investments and financial gains through new facilities. Then after he does the decision of making a new facility, he hand it over budgets to the EPCs, to the project manager for designing, engineering, designing and building these assets. And here also there are a lot of metrics are there which has to be mentioned, maintained in terms of time schedule, cost, budget, everything. After he creates the entire assets, he creates the plant, the most important activity comes to operations and maintain. He hand over all the assets to the operations and maintenance department. And here the two major activities are production which is operations and the maintenance. Here the, while doing the operations, the job of the asset performance management is to make sure the asset what has created is maintained well. To ensure the present profitability of the company, like assets should work optimal level, and the future, see here to see us to secure the good working of an asset for the future also. So the plant involves a lot of assets. So we have to have a proper record for all the assets. We have to maintain upgrades all the assets. So there is a modification request comes from the asset performance management. Once the modification projects comes, it goes to portfolio management again. Once it get approved, the project management again once again start the cycle. So this has the interdependencies between all three major stakeholders of asset life cycle management. And one more thing which needs to be focused on this model, all three major stakeholders are represented in a continuous circle which means that each stakeholder has to do continuous improvement on their activity. They have to continuously improve. There's nothing like they have, they have given some job from the other department. They have to do and complete and job is done. The each activity has to be optimized to have a continuous improvement through all the asset life cycle management. So that's the ARC's model for asset life cycle management. Let's look at the applications what these major stakeholder of asset life cycle management does. For example, in case of asset portfolio management, they do a lot of simulation process models to see how, why we need to create the assets, what is the ROI, financial implications of adding new assets, of approving the modification request. Then it, it goes to project management, like project performance management. He sees like engineering, design, procurement, construction. There are a lot of documentation management is being done in this stage. Once the asset is created, the entire set of document is created, it is handed over to the asset performance manager. He does the operations and maintenance various, through various applications like uh, condition monitoring, plant asset management, enterprise asset management, ensuring the safety, environment health and safety, all these things. Now let's look at the, some of the metrics which needs, which this model uses. Like uh, ROI, ensuring the EHNS for uh, portfolio management, ensuring the capital budgets, schedules, quality of the project for the project manager. And once it is done, the most important activity for a production management, production manager or maintenance manager is to ensure the availability, ensuring the uptime, asset longevity, safety, expense budget, and everything. So the new model, what ARC has suggested through various decades of research, it takes care of almost all the major activity in a small model, which can be presented to the manager for approval of any things. So as I explained about asset life cycle management, I would like to focus a little bit on the importance of asset information management. As I said, we have a three equal importance assets, like physical assets, human assets, and virtual assets. So IT, information technology, comes under virtual assets. So there's a robust information management system in all the stakeholder, all this activity. There's a 
very robust information management are required for project manager, for asset performance manager, and for the portfolio manager to maintain several things. For example, for portfolio manager, demand forecasting, history, projections, config, asset configuration, and for schedule, budgets, context, analytics, several analytics is being used for, for EPC or project manager. Similarly, several recipe management procedures, practices, histories, warranties, everything is done in asset performance manager through asset information management. But this completes, however, there is a lot of information is there which is shared among these major stakeholders. So we need to have uh, interoperability of the IT system among these three st major stakeholders. So by looking at the importance of information management, this completes the asset lifecycle information management model which ARC has developed, which takes care of the robust information system for all the stakeholders and also the common shared information system which is ensure the interoperability between all the stakeholders. So that's all I wanted to present today. So thank you very much for listening to me.